Today on Network Africa, the economic community of West African states takes a stand in the political situation in Gambia, assisting on upholding results of the December 1st presidential election. Voters in Ivory Coast have been at the polls today, hoping to challenge President Alassane Ouattara's monopoly of the country's parliament. And then, Africa's oldest president, Robert Mugabe, wins nomination for the country's presidential election in 2018. Let's begin with Africa. Hello everyone, welcome to the program. I am Amarachi Ubani. We've got a lot lined up today, but as it is Monday, let's review major news stories on the continent over the weekend. On Saturday, the West Africa Regional Bloc says it will uphold the December 1st Gambian election results after long-serving President Yaya Jame refuses to concede defeat to opposition Adama Barrow. Leaders of the economic community of West African states say at the end of the Abuja summit, they would attend Barrow's inauguration on January the 18th, with an aim to bringing the matter to a close the following day. The authority calls on President Yaya Jame to accept the results of the polls and refrain from any action likely to compromise the transition and peaceful transfer of power to the president-elect. Jame's announcement to reverse his position and call for a fresh vote has been widely condemned and ECOWAS leaders say it violates the principle of democratic accountability. In East Africa, Zimbabwe's ruling ZANU-PF party announces President Robert Mugabe to be the party's sole presidential candidate for the 2018 elections at the age of 94. The party made the announcement at its annual conference held in Masvingo addressing the opening ceremony. Mugabe, who is also the party's first secretary, says ZANU-PF remains strong despite the current disputes and various involvement of local opposition parties and hostile Western countries. The veteran president who has ruled Zimbabwe since its independence in 1980 and turns 94 next February, implores party members to stop fighting and unite. He also asks youths to be disciplined and follow party procedures. He stated that some previous younger party members had become indisciplined. Finally, in Burkina Faso, a dozen soldiers were killed in the country's north when unidentified gunmen attacked a military post near the border with Mali. Attacks in Burkina Faso were relatively rare before a major attack by Al-Qaeda fighters in a hotel in the capital, Ouagadougou, that killed 29 people in January. Islamist militants are active in Burkina Faso's northern neighbor, Mali, and Burkina Bay authorities are concerned the long desert border between the two countries could become a transit point for militants. So let's continue our journey in West Africa. So with West Africa's biggest headache at the moment, the political situation in Gambia, President Yaya Jame reneged on a decision to accept election result that showed opposition candidates Adama Barrow won the presidential election. President Jame has announced he would be contesting the results and is calling for fresh polls. Regional body ECOWAS held a meeting over the weekend to discuss the latest developments and ex efforts to implore on the sitting president to step down. ECOWAS says it stands by the results and will be supporting Barrow at the inauguration on January 18th. It is the 50th ordinary session of the ECOWAS summit of heads of state and government as leaders of the sub region converged on Abuja to review issues affecting the region. Chairperson of ECOWAS and President of the Republic of Liberia, Elling Johnson Sirleaf, setting the tone, expresses concern about the security situation in the sub-region and the political impasse in Gambia and Guinea-Bissau. We remain very concerned about the Boko Haram recurring attacks in Nigeria and other countries of the Lake Chad Basin. 
There is equal concern regarding terrorist attacks on civilians and military targets in Mali. The negative impact of these attacks do not take away from the significant progress of President Kieta and his government in the implementation of the Malian Peace and Reconciliation Agreements. Moreover, the Chief of Defense Staff at recent regional meetings have formulated strategies, security inventions to address these terrorist activities. Terrorist activities. The Federal Republic of Nigeria and Chief Host advocates the need for heads of state to manage conflicts more effectively by paying greater attention to conflict prevention mechanisms in the sub-region. We have substantially enhanced our capacity for dealing with conflict as carefully demonstrated in the good integration of the community without tension and the slow peace in mind in the South and in the Kenya Paso. The efforts of multinational drone task force in conventional terrorism in Nigeria and in the neighboring countries have significantly degraded the capacity of Boko Haram in the region, even though separating attacks on soft targets have been recorded in the past few weeks, just as we have sustained the military pressure on the terrorists. The Special Representative of the United Nations Secretary General for West Africa, while pledging the commitment of the United Nations to support a peaceful transfer of power in Gambia, condemns the terrorist attacks in the sub-region. We condemn the recurrent attacks against countries of the sub-region, the most recent of which was perpetrated yesterday in Burkina Faso. Our condolences to the families of the fallen troops, and we wish those injured a very speedy recovery. The meeting, which later continued behind closed doors, is expected to extensively discuss the political situation in Gambia and Guinea-Bissau, in addition to addressing the security challenges bedeviling the sub-region. Meanwhile, coalition spokesperson Halifa Salah says that he's quite certain that if President Jama refuses to give up power, he will be treated like a rebel leader. In a statement released on the issue, Salah said any president who loses constitutional legitimacy becomes a rebel. Anybody who is a military officer or civil servant who refuses to be under another constitutional authority obviously would also become a rebel. His words on paper. Mr. Jammu, who first seized power in a coup in 1994, initially accepted defeat at the hands of opposition leader Adama Barrow, but he since launched a court action to annul the result. Let's get some analysis on ECOWAS intervention in the political crisis in the Gambia. Executive Director of the West African Network for Peacebuilding, Mr. Chukwemeka Eze, says ECOWAS can only implore on President Jame and should have soothed his ego earlier to make the transition process easier. Has gone its own path to a very large extent because there is the principle of non indifference, there is also the principle of non interference, and all this has to play. In 2014, there was a presentation of a supplementary protocol advice to the authority of heads of state and government, that in West Africa, that every country should include a clause on term of office of the president. Again, don't forget that decisions are taken in ECOWAS not on democratic consideration, but on consensus. In other words, 15 must say yes before the resolution passes. The Gambia and Togo kicked against that. And therefore, there is no term limit in the Gambia. And... Yaya Jame has been contesting the election and winning because the opposition was fragmented. So to that extent, you cannot say that legally he is wrong. However, in this instance, and also coupled with a lot of impunity going on in the Gambia, ECOWAS didn't want a situation where we will start another round of conflict that will lead to peacekeeping effort that we cannot even comfortably afford at the moment. 
Ivorians are at the polls today casting their ballots in parliamentary elections as the main opposition seeks to challenge President Alice Samatara's near monopoly of the legislature. The Ivorian Popular Front has largely boycotted politics since the 2011 war, which saw then President Laurent Gbagbo, its founder, ousted and many of its leaders jailed. And more than 3,000 people were killed in the brief 2011 civil war that followed Gbagbo's refusal to accept his defeat to Ouattara's elections. Since then, the world's top cocoa grower has drawn back investors and the economy is set to grow by 8% this, this year. Despite a steady drizzle, dozens of people gathered outside polling stations early in the opposition stronghold of Yupogon in the commercial capital of Abidjan. Ouattara's coalition, the RHDP, which is suffering from some internal divisions, is promising more growth for the French-speaking West African country. But the FBI says there is a need for a strong counterweight to Ouattara in order for there to be long-term stability amid complaints from rights groups that national reconciliation has stalled. The FBI will field 186 candidates for the 255 parliament seats. Ouattara's supporters hold about 85% of those seats in the outgoing National Assembly. Now, Zimbabwe's opposition parties are still reeling from the news of the endorsement of the 92-year-old President Robert Mugabe as the ruling ZANU-PF's candidate for the 2018 election. Speaking to Channel Television in Johannesburg, the Secretary General of the Zimbabwe Communist Party, Nicolas Mabena, says it is clear the ruling party has no succession plan in place. He's, however, positive that things are about to change politically for the country. Let's get more now on the situation in Zimbabwe. Editor of the Zimbabwean independent newspaper, Dumasani Mulea, joins us now from the campus of Harare with more on this. Dumasani, I'm glad you could join us on Network Africa. Uh, thank you so much uh, for inviting me to your uh, program. Um, um, good afternoon. Good afternoon. So how are Zimbabweans reacting to news of Mr. Mugabe's nomination? Well, basically, uh, uh, it was a foregone conclusion that uh, mm -hmm. he will be endorsed by his party to be his presidential uh, candidate in 2018. So nobody's surprised. Uh, the ruling party's people are not surprised. The ordinary Zimbabweans are not surprised. Because uh, these meetings, which the ruling party holds every year and uh, the so-called annual conferences, they are basically a talk shop. You know, they are meetings that are held in order to uh, sing praises from Gabe to um, uh, reassure him that he's still the party leader, to reassert his authority. His supporters use that to basically... Um, renew their loyalty and support to him. But of late, of course, there have been a lot of uh, rumbling of discontent uh, under the surface because he has overstayed. I mean, it's quite clear that he, he has overstayed. He's welcome. Everybody in Zanopia that he speaks to, people want him to go in a, 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 a inside his party. People want to go him to go from outside his party. So it is not a surprise, but uh, at the same time, it is uh, um, something that people are... Uh, worried about because this means that there is gonna is still trying to cling on. Mm. Dumasani, is he certain to win in two thousand and eighteen? Because we've seen him do that over the years. Uh, come again with the question I missed that. Is, is he certain to win again in two thousand and eighteen? I mean he's been in power for more than thirty years now. Yes, uh, look, he has been in power since 1980, uh, basically meaning for 36 years without a break. And uh, he is nine, now 92 years old. So what this means is that uh, in 2018, uh, if uh, he continues to offer himself for re-election, he will be 94. That basically means it's something that is unprecedented in uh, African politics. There's nobody who has ever run for re-election at the age of 94. In fact, I doubt there's anybody around the world who has ever done that. So he will be setting a new record, um, uh, not just in Africa, but around the world for all the wrong reasons. I mean, you can just imagine a 94-year-old person 
uh, no matter uh, how what you think about yourself whether you think you are you are you are you are you are, you are a genius uh, in whatever field of endeavor that you, you would have chosen you just can't function at 94 you are not capable of offering anything new particularly particularly in the business of running a country you cannot run a country effectively if you are 92 worse still if you are 94 so for him to try to uh, seek re-election at the age of 94 yeah. uh, in two years time that is not just ridiculous but it has become completely completely untenable Do and the country is the, the biggest loser in all his uh, uh, power hungry pursuit for uh, 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 to that Dumasani, uh, thank you so much. I know you have a lot to talk about. Uh, many Zimbabweans trying to express themselves about what's going on in their country. Dumasani uh, Mulea, all the way from Harare. Still ahead on Network Africa, though, a day of disobedience has been observed in Sudan. Let's find out what that means after the break.